What's going on guys? Welcome to the 2023-2024 ski gear video. This is my third time doing this, I believe, and I just kind of go over everything that I plan on using for this upcoming season from base layers to skis to boots to the whole deal. It's all right here. So just to be clear before the video starts, I have a ton of Armada gear in this video, but I have never spoken to Armada. I am in no way affiliated by Armada. They have never sent me a piece of gear. I've never had any correspondence to them in my lifetime. So all the gear you see here from Armada, I personally went out and bought with my own money. The only gear that I have received for free at this point is anything that is Zipline related. Zipline is a brand that I have used years before I even started making YouTube videos. So the partnership sort of really grew as the channel grew where I initially would buy products from Zipline. Now they give me stuff for free. This is my poles, my goggles, a few pairs of my gloves. I am neither recommending this gear nor not recommending this gear. This is just the gear that I use that I find works best for me. I am not saying this is the best gear out there. And I think until you have tried tried every pairs of skis until you have worn every helmet and tried every goggle, you really aren't in a position to say a piece of gear is the best out there. So just take this for what it is. This is what I use to uh, ski the resorts in the Western United States and a little bit up into Canada. Starting off with the boring stuff, but arguably one of the most important is your ski socks. I have five different pairs of ski socks here. The two main ones I use are these smart wool ones. They are a lot thinner, a little bit lighter. I feel like it's just a bit more comfortable in my boot. And then if it's a little bit of a colder day or, you know, I don't know, I need a new set. I have these other, these other, I don't even know what brand they are, but they're a lot thicker of a sock. If you aren't using ski socks, um, I think it's a worthwhile $20, $30 investment just to be a little bit more comfortable while you're out there on the slope. I guess to go along with that, because this was just in front of me, this is a powder leash. So on really deep days, I keep these in the van. You put this on your brake, kind of tuck the leash up into your pant cuff. And then if you eject the ski in deep snow, this leash sort of rises to the surface. So hopefully you don't lose a ski, especially with all the solo skiing I do. The last thing I want to have happen is lose a ski somewhere in California or Washington. That has happened to me before. You got to ski down on one ski and it is no fun. Moving along into base layers now. These three on the end here, um, I have a pair of Burton, just leggings, I guess. And then I have two pairs of Armada. I believe these are the Contra bottoms. And then they stop right around your shin. So then you put your ski sock up to the bottom of the base layer, your boot, and you're ready to roll. It's better than wearing like sweatpants underneath your ski pants and stuff like that. And then similarly, I have two sets of Contra base layer tops as well. And these are really nice. These are new, new to me this year. So excited to see how they rock. Traditionally, I would just wear like a t-shirt and these thermals, which I still have in the kit for this year. These are just some big thermals, but the problem with these is that when you sweat and stuff like that, it doesn't necessarily wick away the moisture. So if I'm hiking and I have these on, I get pretty sweaty and then kind of get cold and all that sort of stuff. So that's kind of like my main kit, but I think this year between these, these proper base layers, um, it'll just be a big step up for comfort and uh, warmth this year on the mountain. Moving along into some new mid layers this year. And the first one is this rather, you know, I wouldn't say it's super light, but it's not that it's not very heavy. If this is by Armada as well. And the thought with this is that this will just go directly over one of these base layer tops and then my shell jacket for when it's just kind of like an average day. It's not super cold, it's not super warm. Something like this will help just add that extra layer over the base layer, keep the body heat in. It could also double as just a general little layer for cruising around. It's nice, it's got a hood on it. The second one is this Puffy from Armada. This is a down insulator, so this is an insulated layer that would act as that layer of insulation if you have an insulated jacket. So the thought with this is on a colder day or a deeper powder day where you might be getting a little bit more wet, to wear one of these base layers and then this directly over the top and then the shell. So in my opinion, it's gonna be kind of either one of these. I'd, I think rarely I would wear these at the same time or I would just double or triple, triple layer up on these thermals but not really ideal, not like the proper way to do it, but it has been the way I have been skiing really my entire life. So moving into the ski suits, I will be rocking this year. These again are new to me this year and also from Armada. Both of these suits are the same. They are the Hayden three layer Gore-Tex suits. One is like this golden color and one is just a straight black. So these are the bibs here. And then I also have the jackets as well. These are just shells. So that's why I went a little bit uh, heftier with 
the base layers themselves and the mid layers. But with the productions and making the videos, it is helpful for me to have two different suits so it doesn't always look the same. And with the sort of just plain black and plain yellow, I can actually mix and match these pretty well. So I almost have, I don't know, four or six different combinations of shoots that I can rock. But just on first sort of try on, these have been super comfortable. They're very lightweight. I'm just excited to, to have a new look this year. Oh, I just broke that hanger. Um, but again, almost everything on this rack is Armada with the exception of the, this Burton pair of leggings and then these thermals and just excited to rep it on the mountain this year. And I think that's about it for actual look on the mountain. Moving into sort of like the accessories. Um, first up, I'll go with the neck gaiter. This has been my neck gaiter for like five, six years now. This is made by Turtle Fur. I love this neck gaiter. It is so soft. I've used a few different neck gaiters um, over the years and this one I just keep coming back to. I couldn't, I will run the entire year off this single gaiter alone. It fits really tight. Some of the gaiters I have, they like, they're just not as tight. And then when you ski and move around, they kind of start to fall down. So this one keeps me super warm. And I find is just sort of that perfect layer for whether it's summer skiing or winter. Turtle Fur gaiter, I think you can literally get these on Amazon. I really like it. Next up is the gloves. And when I was unpacking my ski gear, I realized I had more gloves than I ever use. First up is just a, a basic pair of liners. I wear liners all the time underneath all my gloves. So I'll use the wrist skater from the suit and then the, the liner and then a pair of gloves. Oftentimes in early season and late season, and honestly, even in during some of like the main season, I can just get away with, with liners. I feel very fortunate that I have warm appendages, if that makes sense. So with using the camera all the time, sometimes liners are just easier for me to use. Secondly, a pair of gloves that I, again, didn't really realize I had are these zip line. I'm gonna call these like mogul gloves because it really is just like a bump. You know, if you're just out ripping bumps, like a lot of the guys would wear something like this, but for early season stuff and late season, this would be a great light sort of like spring, spring style glove. Zipline unfortunately doesn't make gloves anymore. I have another pair of zip lines that I used to use a lot more. As you can see, they're, the palms are quite worn. This is just like a really solid, you know, nothing crazy, but it's definitely a heavier type of glove. Goes all the way up the wrist. Lots of good protection. And then perhaps my most used glove is this Dakin. 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 I always mispronounce Dakin or Dakin. Someone always graciously corrects me, but <laughs> whatever. These are pretty beat up, as you can tell. Like thumb seems to be falling apart, you know, but. I don't know why I like these gloves so much. So yeah, these are the Dakin. It says Maverick on them. And then if it is a really cold day or a really deep pow day, I do have a nice pair of Hestras. I've had these for so long and they still look brand new. I just don't use them that much, but very nice waterproof, water resistant. So if it is a really deep day or a cold day, this will kind of be my go-to glove with a liner underneath. Easy to pack, easy to carry with me in the van. And it's always nice having a few varieties of gloves to stay warm. Moving into the most important piece of equipment for anyone on the mountain is a helmet. I've used Pret helmets for a few years now. I feel like they're quite popular out here with the Park City Freestyle team. And I, I think Pret might actually be, or they started in Park City or something like that. So you find them a lot out here. I've, I'm using the Pret Epic X with the MIP system and all that sort of stuff. And I feel like the Prets have always treated me well. They fit my head nice. And yeah, other than that, it's a pretty basic helmet. Um, it's warm, but also still breathable. Stoke Squad stickers. You can cop them in the description. GoPro mount on the front, and that's it. I have one helmet, it's black. I don't know, what else do I say about a helmet? That's about it. <laughs> now getting into the goggles, another crucial piece of equipment. If you can't see well out there, it is very hard to have a good day on the hill. So Zipline has sent me these. I have worked with Zipline for many years at this point. I've tried a bunch of their different variations of goggles as Chuck has been producing them. Zipline is a very, very small company started by Chuck Heinrich and a bunch of freestyle skiers. They're still sort of run by World Cup people. Um, a lot of their athletes are on the World Cup circuit. Point is, is that it's a really skier focused brand that they really try to produce products tailored to the performance side of skiing and really support athletes who are at the top echelon of skiing. So with all that being said, the goggles I'm rocking this year are the Podium XTs. This is sort of their flagship line of goggles. Has the magnetic lens for super quick changing, just really nice to be able to swap those out. Unfortunately the package has not arrived but they also have made these in a white frame white strap so if you have the podium the lenses are still the same but if you want a white 
goggle instead, you could pick those up. So I'll be alternating between these black ones and the white ones this year. Really stoked to have a different sort of goggle in the in the lineup. But I just think the Podium XT fits my face and the helmet really well. I never have an issue with fogging up or visibility with the variety of lenses I have. And uh, yeah, really appreciate Chuck and everything that Zipline has done to help support the channel. And um, I think if you guys have purchased from Zipline before and have actually chatted Chuck, he's very, very helpful. If you have an issue with your gear, he's more than willing to replace it, no questions asked. And just a cool partnership to sort of be along with and help in the development of some products. So at this point I have, I feel like every lens you could get. Um, so I'll just go over them very quickly. I have like this rose one. I have a complete blackout one super super dark i have what is this one this is a, a clear one night skiing i have a yellow one for low vis sort of stuff and i have this mirrored blue one which is really cool and this one is like a is like a red it's like a scorched all of the goggles come with like a really nice hard case i end up just putting all the lenses in there now i basically have visibility for any condition imaginable Moving into some of more of the harder goods that I'm sure you guys are actually interested in the poles that I'm using for the year. Again, these are made by Zipline right here on the left. These are the Zipline Blur adjustable poles. This is a brand new set in like this graphite. I don't love the adjustable poles. I'm gonna be honest, just cause I feel like it creates a weak point that from a performance standpoint, you know, I don't really need an adjustable pole, but where they are nice is for hiking around, kind of creates like this more of a hiking our walking stick and then honestly on my end i can extend this out and get a longer selfie stick so which is which is pretty cool and honestly the terrain i kind of want a different pole length for the type of terrain i'm skiing if i'm skiing a steeper bump run i want a very short pole like 40 inches so i can get over the back side of the bump if i'm skiing like a groomer early in the season where you're just not as aggressive you know you could go with a longer pole because you're not going to be so like such in that athletic skiing stance you might just be more here kind of cruising so having a short or pull then it forces me to like kind of hunch over and lose that skiing stance so it is nice to have adjustability based on the terrain and then my most used set of poles are just these zipline blur non-adjustables it's a carbon graphite composite this is kind of their more of like all mountain pole that you know they make specific mogul poles and stuff like that but this is really tailored towards a bigger mountain all mountain sort of pole this is a 42 inch which i think for most people is going to be very short but for me like i've mentioned many times i just enjoy a shorter pole you can get all this zipline gear for 15% off already very good prices using the code Lucas if you're interested in poles sunglasses goggles ski bags whatever it is you find on the website you can use the code Lucas and uh, just save some money so I think that rounds out the poles I'll be rocking this year another new product for me this year is ski boots finally I've been using three-piece Del Bellows for the last two years and just feel like I never really got them where I wanted. And so this year I'm, I upgraded or changed over to back to a two-piece boot from Salomon. This is the S Pro 120 Flex. I did want to go with the 130, but unfortunately they have been out of stock. So I just went with the 120s. I still think they will be a big upgrade over my 110 Flex three-piece boot. I also finally put my booster strap back on. Haven't had a booster strap in two seasons either. So again, don't want to say too much about the boots because I could end up not liking them, but just traditionally Salomon makes a really good boot. And I think the two-piece with the stiffer flex will just help the overall performance of my skiing and hopefully keep me a little bit more locked in and be able to generate even more power on the ski so i did get them completely a like, custom from uh, dude at cole sports dude has worked with the park city freestyle team since 2000 Two, I want to say early 2000s from a boot fitting standpoint. I think he's one of the best in the area. He helped me create custom footbeds, molded the boot, all that sort of stuff. But really excited. I've never had custom molded, never had custom footbeds, anything like that. So this is all pretty new to me and I hope it just makes the whole experience this winter that much better. Getting into the exciting stuff, the actual skis I'll be using in my quiver this year. My whole goal when I'm out on the mountain is to just have fun. So the skis I use, I have no necessarily objective reasoning why I like the stuff I do. It just, I feel like they fit my style well. And um, yeah, that's it. So I, I generally tend to have wider skis. I just like a bigger platform. I never really go out with the intention to just go carve on groomers, um, even if there hasn't been any fresh snow. So I don't typically find myself with narrow skis. And that's kind of like a little preface to all the skis you're about to see here. 
starting off with my most narrow skis. This is the 2023 Armada ARV 106s, AKA the Stoke Crows on here are the Tyroli Attack 17s. They are factory um, recommended mounted. Almost all my skis are just mounted right where they recommend you to. Um, this is a 188 in length. This is the longest of the 106 that they make. I'm about 5'10 height. This will probably be one of my most used skis all year. I'll be using this early in the season at a basin in Keystone, late in the season um, when it gets a little bit more slushy and just on any of those days really where there isn't any fresh snow um, and I just want a bit more of a nimble ski. I made a full review on the ski if you're interested in learning more about my thoughts on it. A nice all mountain ripper. I gotta get you through a little bit of everything. Up next is my most favorite and most used pair of skis that I've ever had. This specifically is the 2023 Armada ARV 116 JJ. Also on the Tyroli Attack 17, I think this is actually a 16, Tyroli Attack, again, mounted at the factory recommended point. This is a 185, I believe they make a 192, but I've opted for the 185. Again, I'm 5'10 in height. And um, yeah, this is just one of my all-time favorite skis for skiing just about anything. This is not a dedicated all mountain ski. This is definitely marketed more as a powder ski, but I've used this in many conditions. And just, I always feel myself, if I don't know what I'm gonna be skiing or kind of just um, needs a ski that I totally trust, I end up reaching for the JJ. But again, 116 underfoot is honestly quite big for a lot of people if you're not used to it. But this ski, I just have so much fun on. I think the graphic, the Stoke Elk is absolutely beautiful. And um, I just really didn't see any reason to upgrade to the 2024 this year. And so again, between this and the 106, I think these will be one of my most used skis this upcoming season. Coming into my only new pairs of skis for this upcoming season, this is the 2024 Armada White Walker 116 underfoot. This is a 185 in length. Again, with my old Tyroli Attack 16s from my previous JJ. So I dismounted the Stoke Kings, the 2018 JJs or 2019s, and I put those bindings on this just to save a little bit of money. Again, mounted at the factory recommended point. I did not go with Sammy Carlson's mount point because I'm just not Sammy Carlson, but excited to try these out. I more or less got them to compare them to the JJ, maybe help a potential buyer out there see what the difference is. It is a totally different ski in my opinion. It's way lighter, different core. And the whole ski geometry is a lot different, but I think just with the difference in the camber underneath the foot, the JJ is a bit more versed to just sort of all mountain ski with an emphasis on powder. And this has very, might be hard to see on the camera, but there is very little camber underneath the foot here, which is gonna make this much more a dedicated powder ski. So excited to try these out. 2024 White Walker 160. In my opinion, 116 is basically like, it's kind of like all you need for resort skiing. I mean, and once you get over that 116, 120 range, you're kind of just in like a ridiculous type of powder ski, water ski, in my opinion. That being said, this is the 2023 Armada White Walker 121. So this is kind of, I think this is actually Sammy Carlson's signature ski. They only make this in one size, it's a 183. So I do think it's a little short, especially because there's so much rocker profile on it. On this ski is the Armada STH-16 binding, and these are just mounted at the factory mount point again, but this is a crazy fun ski that I caution people, it is edgeless from basically right here, so this whole part of the ski doesn't have an edge. I mean, granted, it's not necessarily an effective edge, but again, a ski like this is really just meant for some big, honestly, like backcountry pow skiing. So it's a ton of fun. It's a very soft, playful, poppy ski with the crew core. Sweet ski to have for when it's just like extra deep and you really get a foot of fresh snow and you just wanna kind of boost around Again, you can see the profile here, almost no camber underneath the foot, tons of rocker in it. So do not get this ski if you plan on, you know, using it for all mountain. A ski like this is very tailored towards just powder and powder only. And finally, the last ski in my quiver is basically, in my opinion, I call this like a gag gift. This would be something that you get someone as a joke. Um, but this is the 2022 Armada ARG Mark II. This is a reverse side cut ski, 187 centimeters in length. And when I say reverse side cut, that basically means it is narrow up at the top and then gets the widest point is here in the middle of the ski and then gets narrow again and the tail. Where a traditional ski, the widest point is typically at the tip and tail and it gets narrow 
in the middle, but this is um, 133 millimeters underneath the foot. So an extremely wide ski. If I would say on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the stiffest, this is a 10. The ski is extremely heavy. It's about six pounds per ski. On here is the Tyroli Attack 17s mounted at the factory recommended spot. This is a beast of a ski in the powder. Probably the most effective ski I've used in the powder, just the way the rocker profile happens basically right above the toe piece. Absolutely zero camber in the ski. So this ski is just floating on top of the snow without even having to do anything. I will say it is not very freestyle orientated. It's not flexible. It's so heavy. And I think you kind of forget if you try to bring your skis up to grab them, you know, when you have six pounds on each leg, like that's a lot of lumber to get pulling up there, but just a super fun ski. And I've used these more than I thought I would. And I'm excited to rock them again this year. But let's see this, there's absolutely zero camber. I mean, this ski is completely flat and the rocker starts right here. So, you know, I've had some people ask me how these do on groomers, like they suck on groomers. You know, they're not meant to ski groomers. They're basically meant to get you back to the lift to get up and do another lap of pow, but uh, very fun ski. Uh, again, I don't think for most people, do you need this? No, but if you just want something like this, they do make a UL version now. That's the most recent one. That's with the Kruba core a lot lighter. And I think that's the, uh, that would be the way to go. Still have the same sort of design of a ski with a much lighter profile. Now for me, I don't really find myself using boot bags much anymore, but when I lived in Colorado and was driving to the mountains, you know, from my apartment, you're throwing everything in a boot bag, putting your skis in the back, and then, you know, making sure you have a place to fit everything. So the bags that I do carry with me in the back of the van, this is the Zipline World Cup backpack. It has a spot for your helmet, has your spot for your goggles. You can fit just about all of your layers, your ski suits in this massive compartment up here. And then what's really cool is your boots sit on the outside here. They have this little cap, so they go over the boot, and then you can throw everything everything over your back and walk around. So this has been one of the better boot bags I've used. I used to use the Dakin one, but you just can't fit everything in. A lot of times you just fit your boots, maybe your helmet in the top and stuff around it. But to be able to fit everything that I had in this bag is pretty nice. And then lastly, again, I don't really fly much for skiing, but I do have this zipline ski bag. This fits skis up to, I think, 200 centimeters in length. I can fit two of them. Room for your poles, just about anything else you would need that you'd want to put in a ski bag. So it's got wheels. Again, it's made out of that same tarp like material. If you do need stuff, you can use my code Lucas at checkout to save you more money. It doesn't matter to me if you buy this stuff or not. I'm just telling you what I use. And I think that's about, that's about it, I wanna say. I'm really excited for this year. I feel like I, I've uh, just leveled up my gear from right from my base layers to my mid layers down to my boots. I'm right on through to some of the, the skis in my quiver that I just think will help help make myself a better skier, help make myself more comfortable on the mountain and just have a better experience this winter in general. So I'd love to hear what you guys are rocking this year, but thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. I'll see all of you guys in the next episode. Take it easy, fam. Get stoked for winter. Peace out.